Hello dear students, in the previous video we learned about the refraction of light. We know that the refraction of light is the phenomena of bending of light when the ray of light incident from one medium to another medium. In our daily life we will observe the, the phenomena refraction of light. Now we will discuss some of the consequences which is takes place due to the refraction of light. So consequences due to the refraction of light. There are different consequences we will observe due to the refraction of light. Now we will discuss some of that. The first one is the lateral shift. Lateral shift. This is the one of the consequences which is due to the refraction of light. Then what is by lateral shift? Lateral shift is nothing but the when a ray of light, when a ray of light incident on a incident on a parallel sided parallel sided slab slab. Then the emergent ray, then the emergent ray has the has the direction direction same as that of same as that of incident ray incident ray but but path of the ray path of the ray shifted by shifted by certain distance shifted by certain distance then it is called as a lateral shift so lateral shift is nothing but when a ray of light incident on a parallel sided slab the slab means here glass slab then the emergent ray has the direction same as that of the incident ray but the path of the ray shifted by certain distance then that type of shift is called as a lateral shift the refraction is which is responsible for the lateral shift now we will see how the lateral shift takes place so here I am going to take on a parallel sided glass slab. So this is a glass slab. This is a parallel sided glass slab. Now I am going to incident a ray of light from air medium to this glass medium. So here there are two mediums. So outside of this glass slab is a air medium and this one is the glass medium. So, in air medium and glass medium, air medium is a rarer medium and glass medium is the denser medium. Now, I am going to incident a ray of light from air medium, that is a rarer medium, like this. So, this is the incident ray. Now, I am drawing one normal, this is a normal. It is drawing exactly perpendicular to the surface of the glass slab. So because of this normal I can get the angle of incident and angle of refraction. Now the angle between the incident ray and normal this one is called as an angle of incidence. When this incident ray enters to the glass slab then it will undergo the refraction of light. Because here the medium changes it bends like this. Now the angle between the normal and refracted. Now this one when it enters to the glass medium then it will bend. So that ray is called as the refracted ray and the angle between the normal and the refracted ray taking as an R. 
actually the incident ray should pass like this actually the incident ray should pass like this but because of this glass medium it bends towards the normal okay actually this is the path of the incident ray because of refraction it will change its path and it will go like this go like this and when it come out from the glass lab again it will undergo the refraction because now this one is the glass medium outside it is an air medium when it comes out from the glass medium here glass is the denser medium and the air is the air is the rarer medium here yes? when the ray of light coming out from the denser medium to rarer medium then it will bend away from the normal now again i am drawing one normal here this is the normal this is the normal now this angle is r now this angle is r when it come out from the glass medium it will bend away from the normal it will bend away from the normal like this now the angle between the uh, refracted ray and the normal then it is taking as here i this one is taking as i so like this you will observe the refraction of light in the case of a glass slab if you observe here see there will be a change in a, or there will be a shift in the path of light right see here actually the incident ray should go like this but because of refraction it bends towards the normal there is a shift in the path of the ray of light how much shift takes place see here from this to actual path okay where it bends the incident ray where it bends to the actual path of the ray there will be some distance between them that distance i am taking as x this distance i am taking as x this distance is called as lateral shift that means the actual incident ray shifted this much of distance that that means x distance it's shifted so that type of shift that type of shift is called as a lateral shift this is because of a refraction of a light suppose that if x is the thickness of the suppose that sorry p i am taking here t is the thickness of this slab if t is the thickness of this slab and i is the angle of incidence angle of incidence and r is the angle of refraction angle of refraction refraction then then lateral shift can be written as then lateral shift shift here lateral shift is nothing but x this distance is called as lateral shift that is x is equal to there is a one formula t divided by cos r t divided by cos r sin i minus r this is the one of the equation in which we are using to find the lateral shift x is equal to t divided by cos r here t is the thickness of the slab r is the angle of refraction i is the angle of incidence so x is equal to t by cos r into sin i minus r suppose that if suppose that if i is equal to 0 i is equal to 0 means if the ray of light incident along the normal then we know that angle of refraction also zero there is no any uh, refraction will takes place so if i is equal to 0 or also zero if i substitute i and r as zero then i will get x also zero then x also zero that means if the angle of incidence is zero then angle of refraction also zero in this case we will not observe any shift in the incident ray of light that means lateral shift is equal to x is equal to zero suppose that if if i is equal to 90 degree if the angle of incidence is 90 degree then if i substitute i is equal to 90 degree 
then I will get the x is equal to t. Then I will get the x is equal to t. That means the lateral shift is a maximum in this case. When the angle of incidence is 90 degree, then the lateral shift is a maximum. Then x is equal to t. I will get. That is the one of the consequence due to the refraction of a light. Now we will see another two more consequences which is due to the refraction of a light. The second consequence due to the refraction of light is a normal shift. Now let us see what do you mean normal shift. Normal shift means when when an object when an object is placed when an object is placed in one medium in one medium and viewed it viewed or observed it from another medium from another medium along the along the normal along the normal to the surface along the normal to the surface then then there is a then there is a apparent then there is a apparent change in then there is a apparent change in position of an object apparent change in position of an object then it is called as a normal shift this is the another consequence due to the refraction it tells that when an object is placed in one medium and observed it from another medium along the normal to the surface then there is a apparent change in position of an object. Then that is called as a normal shift. Let us see how normal shift takes place. I am here considering one surface. That surface is nothing but interface. It is called as a, this line is called as an interface. That means this line which separates the two medium. Or we can tell this is the surface between the two medium. Above this is the one medium, below this is the another medium. And I am taking one object and that object I am placing in one medium. So I am placing one object in this medium. Okay. So normally the, the light which is coming out from this uh, object, I am drawing like this. So, this is the light which is coming out from the object. I am considering here two light rays which is coming out from this object. This is an object. And which it which coming out from the object, it should come out to the another medium. When it come out to the another medium, there will be a refraction of light takes place. It will bend like this. Two light rays bends like this. This is the in general case. Now I am going to draw here for the normal. So this is exactly the normal drawn to the surface. If I observe this object along the normal to the along the normal to the surface. Okay, along the normal to the surface. That means you will you should observe this object from here you should observe this object from here then the image of this object appear above the actual position of the object this is the image in which you are getting due to this object that means here you will get that there is a change in the position, apparent change in position of this object. If you observe this object along the normal, then this object appear above this object. That means 
you will feel like there is a change in the position of this object okay so you will get the image you will observe the ray which is come on, coming out from this image okay this is the uh, mark i am drawing this indicates that the ray which is coming out from this image image of this object and there will be a shift you will observe that means here shift means there is a change in the actual position of the object that change in actual position of the object is called as a normal shift so in this case i am taking this one as a, this point as a l okay here i is the image o is the object and here o to i this is actually the shift that means if you observe along the normal this object appears here that means it is appear to appears like shifted in its position so o to i is called as a normal shift o i here o i is a normal shift normal shift and the distance from o to n the distance from o to n is called as a real depth actually the real height of this object is a o to n so that one is called as a real depth o n real depth and here o to i is the normal shift and n to i n to i there is a n i is called as a apparent depth apparent depth depth it is actually not the real depth it is the apparent depth you will get the image of this object or you will appear to uh, change in the position of this object because of a refraction of light so that this height is called as a apparent depth actually the position of the object is o to n actually its depth is o to n but because of refraction of light its depth is become apparent so that depth is n to i that depth is called as apparent depth okay if if n is the if n is the refractive index of the medium if n is the refractive index of the medium in which in which the object is placed so i am taking here n as the refractive index of the medium which medium the medium is in which the object is placed so this is the medium so n is the refractive index of this medium so if n is the refractive index of the medium then i can write n is equal to real depth divided by real depth divided by apparent depth real depth divided by apparent depth depth if you know the refractive index of this medium you can find the apparent depth n i apparent depth you can find how to find apparent depth apparent depth is equal to apparent depth is equal to real depth divided by real depth divided by n that is nothing but refractive index using this formula you can find the apparent depth of this object apparent depth and how to find the normal shift so to find the normal shift we are using one form one equation normal shift normal shift that is y is equal to y is equal to u into 1 minus 1 by n this is the formula which is used to find the normal shift y is equal to u into 1 minus 1 by n here u is nothing but real depth so we are denoting real depth as u and apparent depth we are denoting as v it's not a object distance and image distance in this case in this case real depth we are denoting as u and apparent depth we are denoting as v so normal shift we can find using this for uh, equation that is y is equal to u u is nothing but real depth into 
1 minus 1 by n. n is nothing but the refractive index of the medium in which the object is placed. So this is the second consequence due to the refraction of light. Third consequence due to the refraction of light is twinkling of stars. In our daily life, we will observe the twinkling of stars in the night sky. Because of refraction of light, stars appear to twinkle. Now we will observe how this twinkling of stars takes place. Now I am considering one earth here and considering earth and we know that earth has its own atmosphere and assume that this is an atmosphere of the earth and stars as the long distance stars are in the long distance from the earth assume that this is a star and it will produce star will produce its own light and it has its own intensity when it reaches to the earth's atmosphere the light ray which is coming from the star star and it enters to the atmosphere then there is a refraction of a light it takes place while the refraction of light takes place when it enters to the earth's atmosphere that one we will discuss see earth's atmosphere actually made up of so many layers and earth's atmosphere has so many dust particles gas particles and so many things it consists of that's why its density is different in different places in the case of earth's atmosphere density is different in different places and the refractive index of this atmosphere also varies to the layer to layer of this atmosphere so that because of a change in density and refractive indexes in the atmosphere there is a refraction of a light it takes place that means it will take the ray of light which is coming from the star will take the zigzag path and in which you are observing on the surface of the earth then the light ray which is coming to you appears to be star is twinkling okay that is the reason why star is appears to be twinkling because of a change in density of the atmosphere and because of a change in refractive indices and also there is a apparent shift in the position of the star because of this it will appear that apparent shift in the position of star actually the position of star is this one but because of this refraction of light here the star is appears here that is apparent change in position of the star then it will appear like the star is in this position actually the position of star is here that is because of a refraction of light but if we observe in the case of planets planets will not twinkle why planets will not twinkle because if we consider on a planet here planet is near to the earth compared to the star okay planets are nearer to the earth compared to the star and the light ray which is coming out from the planet they will also undergo the refraction they will also go to the undergo the refraction of light but the intensity of this light they will not changes only the position of this planet changes only the position of this planet changes but the intensity of that light ray which is coming out from the coming out from this planet will not change so that you will uh, uh, so that it appears like not twinkling it appears like not twinkling compared to the star and another thing is that the star has a large uh, star has a long distance from the earth's surface and planet has not that much of a distance compared to the star because of that it is not twinkling these planets will not twinkling only the stars will twinkling but if you come out from this earth's atmosphere and if you observe out from this atmosphere then stars will not appear like twinkling only because of this atmosphere 
that twinkling of a star cell takes place. When a light ray enters into this atmosphere, there is a refraction of a light ray takes place because a change in a uh, change in a refractive index and density, there is a refraction of light takes place because of that intensity of that light also changes which is coming out from the star. That's why twinkling of a star cell takes place. But the planet will not twinkle because it has the less distance from the earth compared to the stars and its, its intensity, the light which is coming out from the planet, the intensity of that light will not change so that it will not twinkle. That is about the some important consequences due to the refraction of light.